All right, so today we're going over the ELDS hospital rule. So uh, essentially in this unit, it's a much easier way of differentiating a fractional uh, derivative in which, you know, you could use a quotient rule, but sometimes it actually might be easier to differentiate this way. So let's say we have limit as x goes to a uh, f, f a over g a. Uh, normally you could take the quotient rule, you know, f prime time, f, f prime um, g minus g prime f over g squared. But uh, this, what you would do here is uh, you rewrite limit as x goes to a, f prime a over g prime a. And you would do this until you have a definite answer. And uh, let's say you do find the derivative using the else hospital rule. Then if you still get it in definite form, which would be zero over zero or infinity over infinity, uh, most notably, then you would just use the rule again, and you would use it until you get a definite answer. And uh, some definite answers that you know may catch people off, off guard would be like infinity over zero. In that case, that'll be uh, does not exist because anything over zero uh, does not exist. And zero over infinity would just be zero. That means that the denominator is getting infinitely larger, which means that the number is uh, oscillating towards zero at an infinite rate. And yeah, you want to do this until a definite answer. And yeah. All right, so let's start off with some simple exercises just to get the mind going about the Ellis Hospital rule. So we're going to figure out uh, a through e based on the given values fx0, gx0, h of x1, uh, px, and qx are infinity. And all of them are as limit uh, as x goes to a. So first one is limit as x goes to a is f of x over g of x. So f of x is 0, g of x is 0. So as we talked about, uh, 0 over 0 is indefinite form. So our answer would be indefinite. And now let's take a look at b. So b is f of x over p of x. Uh, for b, we're going to have 0 over infinity. And also, as we talked about, 0 over infinity is just 0. So we write 0. And then c is limit as x goes to a, h of x over p of x. h is 1 and p is infinity. Uh, essentially, that is just it. That is just going to be 0 because 1 over infinity Infinity is relating to a number that's getting infinitely bigger, but that's just going to be closer to zero. So it's going to be zero. And D is going to be limit as X goes to A of P of X over F of X. P of X is going to be infinity. Uh, F of X is going to be zero. So it's going to be infinity over zero. And as we talked about, infinity over zero is going to be does not exist because anything over zero does not exist. And E is going to be limit as X goes to A of P of X over Q of X. So P of X is infinity and Q of X is infinity. I mean, infinity over infinity, which is an indefinite form. That would be our answer for E. All right, let's look at some graphical questions here. So for five and six, we have used the graphs of F and G and their tangent lines at uh, X equals two to find limit as X goes to two of F of X over G of X. So as we talked about by the Ellis Hospital rule, you could rewrite limit as x goes to 2 as f prime, oh yeah, we should write a little handle there, f prime f x over g prime x. And that would, um, if it's a definite number, then you don't need to use the Ellis Hospital rule to the second derivative. So let's take a look at what f prime of x is. So we could rewrite limit as x goes to 2. So f prime of x is going to be, so these are the tangent lines in the graph, uh, which is essentially the slope at the point. So the coefficient of the x value in these tangent equations is going to be our f prime and g prime. So f of x, we can see that is going to be this right here, 1.8, open parentheses, x minus 2. Uh, which is just going to be 1.8 as our f prime of x. So we on the top we could write 1.8, and our g of x, g prime of x equation is going to be 4 over 5 x minus 2, and our slope there is going to be 4 over 5. So we could rewrite that as 0 0.8. And if you want to write in 
like a, a fraction without decimals, that would just simplify out to, I believe, 9 over 4. And that would be your final answer for number 5. Now let's take a look at number 6. Number 6 is essentially the same thing. So we have both of our tangent equations right here. This is going to be for 5 and this is going to be for, or this is going to be for f, this is going to be for g. Rewrite that. So it's going to be limit as x goes to t, uh, f prime x over g prime x. And that's going to be equal to limit as x goes to 2. Uh, let's take a look at f prime x. f prime x is, is going to be 1.5 over here. And then g prime x is going to be 1 over here. Because uh, in front of the x, it's going to be 1. And that's going to be a negative number as well. So we're going to have negative 1. So if we simplify that out, that's going to be negative 3 over 2, which is going to be our limit as x goes to 2. And now you see, uh, for both of these questions, we didn't use the Alice Hospital rule more than, more than once. Because once we used it once, we got a definite answer. Uh, since these are numerical answers, they're not something like 0 over 0 or, in, or infinity over infinity. Alright, so let's take a look at these few questions here. So now we're going to be actually doing some algebra. So we have limit as x goes to 3 for number 8 of x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. So what we could do now is just, um, usually you could use the quotient rule, but uh, you could also break out the, the denominator and then use the quotient rule, which you would have 1 over x, my, x plus 3. But uh, we're just going to use the Alice Hospital rule here just uh, because this is a unit. But uh, there's always an easier way than the Alice Hospital rule. If there is, then use it. So we can break this up into limit as x goes to 3. So we're going to find f is on the top, g is going to be on the bottom. We're going to find derivative of the top. That's going to be 1. And then derivative of the bottom is just going to be 2x. And oh yeah, x goes to 3. And now, let's see, if we plug in 3, do we get a definite answer? And that is yes, because if we plug in 3 on the bottom, we get 3 times 2, which is 6. And our limit as x goes to 3 of uh, f, f of x over g of x, rather, is going to be 1 over 6. And now let's move on to number 9. Number 9 is going to be this big thing going on over here. So it's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x minus 4. So we're going to have limit as x goes to 4. Derivative of the top, that's going to be 2x minus 2. And then on the bottom is going to be 1. And now we can see that if we plug in 4 into x, we're going to get a definite answer. In that case, it's going to be 2 times 4, which is going to be 8, minus 2, which is 6, over 1, which is just going to be 6. That's our final answer there. Now number 10 is going to be limit as x goes to negative 2 of x cubed plus 8 over x plus 2. So we could just rewrite limits as x goes to negative 2. And now we just find the derivatives. We're going to have 3x squared on the top. On the bottom, we're going to have 1. And... If we, we could plug in negative 2 right here, so if we plug in negative 2, we're going to have uh, negative 2 squared, which is 4, times 3, which is going to be 12, over 1, which is just 12. And now number 11 is going to be limit as x goes to 1. Uh, we're going to have x to the 7th power minus 1 over x to the 3rd power minus uh, 1. It's a good thing we have limit as x goes to 1. I would dread putting anything otherwise to the 7th power. But uh, if we find the derivative, we're going to have 7x to 6 power over 3x squared. And we could see that if we plug in, uh, let's, say, let's say we plug in 1 to, into this. We're going to have 1 to the 6 power times 7, and then 1 to the 2nd power over 3. So we don't need to use the Alice Hospital rule again here. If the coefficients here were both 1 and it was x to the 6th power and uh, x to the 2nd power, we would. So if we plug in 1, we're just going to have 7 over 3. That would be your answer there. And then number 12. Number 12 is going to be limit as x goes to 4 of radical x minus 2 and x minus 4. So radical x, we're going to rewrite that as x to half power. 
And now we're going to find the derivative here, which is going to be half x to a negative half power. If we rewrite that, we're going to have 1 over 2 radical x. That's a good rule to know uh, the derivative of square root of x, just because uh, you get that you get asked that a lot, and uh, it'll come in, in during substitution. But uh, so the derivative of square root of x is going to be one over two radical x, and then square root. Of, I mean, derivative of negative two is going to be zero, and then denominator we're going to have one uh, because we have x minus four. And now all we need to do is, if we rewrite it, we're actually just going to have 1 over 2 radical x. And now if we plug in x for 4, we are going to have square root of 4, which is going to be 2 times 2, so it's going to be 1 over 4. And that'll be your answer. Alright, so I want you guys to try number 2 and 3. So for these, you're going to base your answers off of the values given here. These are the same values we used before. Uh, so you could pause the video and try those out. Alright, so let's take a look here. So uh, we're going to use the same rules we have been using. So this is going to be a case of multiplication. This is going to be a case of subtraction and one addition. So we have limit as x goes to a of f of x times p of x. So what we're going to do is just uh, plug in the value. So f of x is going to be 0, and p of x, where is it? Negative, or is going to be infinity. And we know p times infinity is going to be just 0. Or, I mean, 0 times infinity is going to be 0, so our answer is 0. And then for b, we're going to have limit as x goes to a of h of x times p of x. h of x is going to be 1. And was it p of x is infinity, so our answer is going to be infinity. And now limit as x goes to a of p of x times q of x. So we're going to have infinity times infinity. And infinity times infinity as uh, the same as infinity divided by infinity is going to give us an indefinite answer. So we're going to put indefinite for that. All right, and one thing I forgot to note is um, instead of indefinite, you do have to write indeterminate. But uh, there are some teachers that are going to accept indefinite, but uh, indeterminate is the right way to, objectively, the right way to write it. But uh, so let's move on to number three. So number three is a case of subtraction and then addition. So we have limit as x goes to a of f of x minus p of x. So f of x is zero minus p of x. It's going to be infinity, and this is just a simple case of subtraction. It's going to be negative infinity as our answer. And now b is going to be limit as x goes to a of p of x minus q of x. So p of x is infinity, q of x is infinity, or infinity minus infinity, which is going to be indeterminate. And then we have limit as x goes to a of p of x plus q of x. So this is going to be infinity plus infinity. And the answer to that is actually going to be infinity. All right, so I want you guys to try number 13 through 17. So these are uh, focusing on mostly trig functions. So you would use Al's hospital rule to figure out the answer. Alright, so let's take a look at a few questions here. So uh, we have number 13. Number 13 is limit as x goes to pi over 4 is going to be equal to sine x minus cosine of x over tan x over uh, minus 1. So what we could do is uh, actually before we find and use the else hospital rule, we could simplify first. So we have sine of x minus cosine of x on top. That could stay the same. On the bottom, we're going to have or uh, rather, we could write it like this. We're going to have on the bottom is going to be sine of x over cosine of x. And that's going to be minus uh, 1, which we could rewrite 1 as cosine of x over cosine of x. Uh, which essentially this would be sine of x minus cosine of x over cosine of x. 
and that would be divided by sine of x minus cosine of x divided by 1. And now all we need to do is cross multiply because, you know, when you divide two fractions, you could cross multiply them. We cross multiply them, we're going to have sine of x minus cosine of x uh, multiplied by cosine of x. It looks, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff here, but, you know, bear with me. And then on denominator, we're going to have 1 times, uh, we could actually write out the 1, we're going to have 1 times sine of x minus cosine of x. And you could see on the denominator and the um, numerator, we have sine of x minus cosine of x. And uh, we would also write limit as x goes to pi over 4. So we could cross out that uh, since they're the same. And now see what we have done from the start. We've kind of just like eliminated a lot of the hard part before we use the Altosterol rule. So now we're just left with cosine of x over 1, which could just be cosine of x. and uh, by the radian circle, we know, or you could even graph it or graphing calculator, we know that uh, if we plug in pi over 4 into x, we're going to have a, a determinant number. So it's basically going to be cosine pi over 4, and that is equal to radical 2 over 2. And radical 2 over 2 is going to be your final answer for number 13. All right, so now we're going to move on to number 15. We're going to skip number 14 because it's kind of the same thing as number 13, except uh, like you would do the same thing as at the start. You should break up tangent and then simplify this before you find out and use the else hospital rule. So let's start on with number 15. So number 15 is going to be limit as t goes to 0 of e to t 2t power minus 1 over sine t. So there's nothing to simplify here, so we can just find the derivative straight away. Uh, top is f, bottom is g. So if the uh, derivative of e to 2t power is going to be 2e 2t, and then derivative of negative 1 is 0. And now we have on the bottom sine t, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine, so it's going to be cosine t. And we could quickly make sure that this is not going to give us an indeterminate answer. Uh, if we plug in 0 into cosine t, cosine 0 is going to be 1, so we kind of already know this is going to be a determinant answer. So if we plug it in, we're going to have 2e to the 2 times 0 power over cosine 0. So if we simplify even further, we're going to have 2, and then e to the 0 power is going to be 1, so it's going to be 2 times 1 over cosine 0, which is going to be 1. And our final answer is going to be 2. And now we're going to move on to number 16. Number 16 is going to be, I guess, something similar. So on the top, we have x over x to the power of 2. On the bottom, we have 1 minus cosine x. So we find the derivative of that. We're going to have 2x on the top. And then on the bottom, we're going to have uh, cos, just sine of x. Because derivative of negative cosine of x is going to be sine of x. So let's see if we plug in 0 into sine of x, we're going to get 0, and then 0 into 2 is going to be 0. So that's going to be indeterminate. So let's find the, let's use the else hospital rule again. So we're going to have limit as x goes to 0. If we use the else hospital rule again, we find derivative of 2x, that's going to be 2, over a derivative of sine of x, which is going to be cosine of x. And now if we plug in 0 uh, into x, it's going to be cosine 0, which is 1, and then on the top is going to be 2, so we're going to have 2 over 1, which is also going to give us an answer of 2. And now let's take a look at number 17. Number 17 is a little bit bigger of a question. So we're going to have limit as x goes to 1. And then now we don't have anything simplified, so we could just find the derivative. Uh, we're going to have on the top, we're going to have cosine x minus 1 times the derivative of whatever is inside, but derivative of x minus 1 is 1, so uh, we don't really have to put 1. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 3x squared plus 1. And let's see, if we plug in 1 into this, we're going to have, on the bottom, we should have 4, and then we're going to have cosine 0. Cosine 0 is 1. Uh, so we're going to have a definite answer, so let's start plugging in. So we're going to have cosine uh, 0 because 1 minus 1 
And then on the bottom, we're going to have 3 plus 1, because 1 squared is 1 times 3 is 3. So cosine 0 is going to be 1, and then 3 plus 1 is 4, so our final answer is 1 over 4. And uh, that's basically for the L's hospital rules. So for this unit, uh, this way of finding the limit of something is much faster than the quotient rule many times. But uh, if you find the quotient rule to be easier, you can just use it. Uh, there's no set rule you have to use or always use. But uh, some, you know, there are some rules to this uh, L's hospital rule, which is the indefinite forms knowing uh, when you get them and when you get them you have to use the rule again and then when you get a definite answer you just write it out and especially these like zero over infinity is going to be zero and infinity over zero is going to be does not exist and uh that's basically it for l's hospital rule